Alrighty, hello everyone. My name is Arcadia. I'm just going to be doing a quick kind of introductory course on products. So that's going to be the week three of RGL season six. So I'm going to just go through. I'm going to start with the mid fight. Then I'm going to talk about holding. Then I'm going to talk about pushing. So it's pretty straightforward. Okay, so let's talk mid fight. So the classic setup is to roll out everyone main. So you're going to have your pocket soldier up here on this rock. Your roamer is going to be up here or like around concrete area. You're going to have your demo about right here. Your medic can be around all along here, anywhere kind of around this demo at beam length. Then you usually get your pocket scout top of this rock can play all around this rock area, all around here. Has a lot of free reign. And then you get your flank scout up top. So I'm gonna go through each of these one by one. So I'm gonna start with the pocket soldier. So the pocket soldier wants to get up on this rock and kind of abuse this high ground to put spam on the enemy. This is a spot that's easy to heal from a medic down there can still beam this guy, can bow this guy, he's very safe if he backs up. Has great sight lines across the map. All the critical areas, that kind of mirror where I just talked about, is able to spam. And also finally is able to bomb. Can bomb at the highest point of the map, kind of right below this bridge. Can get in very close. So the idea of this soldier is to essentially stay passive, play around the heals, just keep buffed and, and like try to avoid damage until space is made. Once space is made, this soldier can follow up. Uh, usually the bomb is coordinated, and I'll uh, talk about that a little bit more later. So, you're looking to hit spam on critical targets, such as the demo man and the medic. Anytime you can hit more than one person with spam, you should try to do that. Uh, that makes this class very effective. Now to move on to getting aggressive as a soldier. So you're usually going to want to coordinate with your roamer, some kind of target, whether that's cliff, whether that's like China or like this ground, the rock, concrete, you know, you coordinate with your soldier based on the space that's being made by your team. We'll get into that a little bit more later. And so what that normally looks like is counting down and, and bombing around the same time and towards the same location, trying to hit a lot of splash at the same time. That's kind of the basics for the pocket soldier. I'm going to talk about the demo man real quick. Demo man first. So the job of the demo, unlike other maps, he only gets here marginally faster than the other classes. So this time is usually spent to try to hit one or two stickies on the other demo man. Turn off no clip real quick. So Usually your first sticky is going to go on Demo Man. Your second sticky can also kind of go maybe a little deeper, try to hit some multi-splash. But the rest of your time is kind of lock down a lot of different zones. Like if you can lock down the left side or the right side or on the rock, you can get a lot of like stuff set up for your team and perhaps create space. And same goes for pipes as well. You should be looking to kind of intermix pipes as well if they ever sort of peek up beyond this this lip you can look to hit pipes and do splash damage but this mid has a lot to do with kind of locking down down different areas for your team and helping them get aggressive um, whether that be with your soldiers with your scouts uh, kind of depends so uh, really quickly i'll kind of go into like if you're looking to help your soldiers coordinate a bomb, for example, you can kind of cordon off an area. So if you, say, put some sticks down here, put some sticks behind them, this helps your bombs become much more effective. You can essentially create another barrier in which the enemy gets killed if they walk into it. So you can kind of support your team by doing stuff like this. And at the same time, even if these sticks aren't perfectly placed, kind of landing them and allowing them to just sit there uh, kind of forces scouts to look at them and shoot them. So 
This can be very effective. You should be if your if your soldiers are looking to coordinate a bomb, you should help them by putting down sticks in critical areas. So just cutting off their retreat, cutting off different angles that they can take. So just kind of keeping them in one cordoned off zone. And then of course the point area is kind of your domain. If anyone's looking to get aggressive, you should try to put a stop to that. You don't want anything to get across the point into your half. Yeah, so that's going to be pretty much the rough overview of the demo man looking to kind of be a support player, but at the same time you're doing lots of damage uh, and being really powerful. So then I'll next talk about the flank scout because this can often be one of the more difficult classes to play, especially on Koth maps. I see lower level, uh, low, lower level scouts tend to struggle with the sort of responsibilities that are involved with playing on this flank. Uh, normally they, they like to kind of do the pocket scout stuff and, and be aggressive, but I think this is kind of a critical mistake um, in some sense because the scout has a really important job to do. When soldiers tend to bomb, you uh, you really want to be there to receive them. This is this sort of high ground all up along these sheets on here, like everywhere on China is very strong for the scout. Um, it kind of gives you fantastic sight of everywhere that a soldier can come from. You have view of everything, you can pistol spam from far away, you can like see these soldiers coming and deny them, especially anyone that goes behind, anyone that tries to bomb fast through concrete, you're here so fast to deny them. Stop them from doing anything funny behind. So this, this is really critical. The scout's job is to deny soldiers and to fight people that try to go behind and try to do funny stuff behind. This is sort of the last guardian of the medic, even though it's like a, a flank roll. You're just kind of the observer. Uh, oftentimes, this will be sort of the least flashy, least showy. You're not going to have a lot of opportunities, but... You know, sometimes, like, your job is just much more important than putting up numbers in terms of winning. Um, next, I'm going to talk Pocket Scout. So, Pocket Scout wants to play on this rock and assist the Demo Man in his sort of capabilities. Usually a more defensive role. So, you're looking to counter any bombs on your Demo, bombs on your Medic that are shallow. Uh, kind of assist in sorts of... Like, everyone's duty is kind of your domain. You're more of the... Like, the flank scout is kind of the, the final defender. You're like the first line of defense. You kind of want to help your demo man accomplish what he wants to accomplish. You want to help your roamer accomplish what they want to accomplish. You know, you... <clears throat> and you want to stop any sort of shallow threats. Anything crossing point. Any low bombs. Anything that kind of resides in your territory which is sort of the point as well and the demo medic this grass area so you don't want to deal with behind flankers you want to keep your eyes forward keep you know let your flank scout deal with all that stuff you want to be focused on everything in front you don't want to deal with people back there don't want to deal with any of that just keep your eyes forward you want to deny any bombers and and just help your uh your classes succeed in front. Um, finally, on <clears throat> Medic for the last combo class, you're looking to keep your demo, or at least, so you're going to get to mid, you're going to buff your demo, and then you really want to keep this scout healthy. This scout being 185 is, is your number one priority at pretty much all times. The reason for this is, is like, because scout is such a valuable tank class, in a sense, they can uh, they can dodge a lot of damage and do a lot with such, you know, a tiny health pool. They only have 185 health when they're fully buffed compared to other classes. You can buff them relatively fast and keep them topped relatively easily. Along with the scout speed buff that comes along with that that's very nice for the medic. Uh, you're just looking to help the scout do his job and kind of assist the demo man. Make sure they're not getting prevented from doing their job. Uh, the other thing is looking to bow these soldiers up there, up there, 
like along here, you want to keep your soldiers healthy. It's really important, often overlooked, because uh, getting these soldiers buffed uh, when possible is is highly valuable. It allows them to be successful when you have time. And same thing, nice to just look up once in a while, give your flank scouts some beam. It's easy to forget about them up there, but you know they do a really valuable job, like keeping your behind safe. So. It's really important to just spread the love a little bit, so your your kind of priority is your scout first, your demo man second, and then you want to get your soldiers and flank scout kind of last. So that's how you typically play medic. You're going to play along like right here, anywhere like beam length to this demo, around the scout. You can play all along here. It's relatively safe. You have a lot of good room to surf. You just don't want to get bounced off against this or like against cliff and you don't want to get stuck on any of these walls but as long as you're kind of avoiding that medic is relatively straightforward on this map uh it's easy to kind of play around your team on the mid fight so finally last class soldier roamer so you're the protector of the flank as well you're the first line of flank defense um this connector room is your domain. You do not want to let scouts come through here. You do not want to let soldiers come through here. And if they do get behind, you don't want to chase them. Uh, that's for your flank scout to deal with unless they try to come and fight you. Uh, the convenience of playing in a spot like this is that you have a great angle of spam on this pack. If a scout gets behind you here, they really can't do that much about you. You have great spam angles, you have high ground, you have your other scout ready to assist, you can spam, but you also have to keep track of this door as well. So these these are kind of your only two jobs, just keeping this door in check, making sure behind guys really don't do anything and you do not want to feed into them behind. The other thing is uh, bombing aggressively. So f when you want to coordinate with your pocket is uh, at times where you can double bomb. So things that you should kind of be looking for for this is your demo saying that he's got sticks up or that he's done big damage. Maybe your scout's done big damage and they call that. Um, on many teams that I've been on, the roamer has been the one to sort of initiate the bombs because uh, just happens to be how the players play, but you can kind of do it either way. Uh, it doesn't necessarily need to be one class or the other coordinating. It can be either of them. Um, so they should just be listening, most importantly, for damage calls and looking to follow up. So an example call for a bomb uh, would be like, you can see the time at the top of your screen normally, uh, whichever is counting down. You can say like, Let's bomb Cliff at 2.35. Say it's like 2.40, you count down, and then you go at 2.35. And uh, this is pretty common. This might be a little basic for some of you watching, but that's okay. Um, so yeah, you're looking to kind of complement each other. Perhaps you guys plan this in, in advance, and you look to... Like maybe fake with your pocket. This is perhaps more of a high level strat or like high level ideas, but looking for your like first bomber to kind of make space and fake out. Maybe they like bomb over, they bomb away, they like do a double jump and kind of get behind, and then your rumor falls up, maybe a second delayed, something like that. There's a lot of possibilities, a lot of stuff that you can do. Like the team coordination possibilities are quite varied and unique. You can go all sorts of different places and coordinate. So I think that's that's really important. It's just uh, that kind of listening skill, looking, trying to figure out when the best time to bomb is. And of course you can hit spam from, from up here a little bit. You do have some sight lines of cliff and those sort of things if you drop down. So, especially if you can kind of play right here, you have good spam angles, but this is like a very forward place to be playing. So, just bear that in mind. And usually the pocket has a lot more spam angles than this roamer. So that's kind of the, the gist of the mid-fight. The main objective is essentially to coordinate 
uh, aggression. So there's a lot of different things that you can do on this map. Whether it's tank your demo man, they can go forward and they can spam. Uh, this is one avenue you have. You can perhaps take both your scouts right and you can run right and try to take a lot of space and then call a bomb once you've kind of forced them into an area. This is one example. You can simply just run the double bomb. There's a lot of different ideas that are involved. As well, your flank can possibly look to get aggressive. Uh, you can kind of support a flank push with a couple different classes. Maybe you get your flank scout and your roamer to come all the way over here and kind of run around and, and be annoying. This is just some ideas of how to play the map. Uh, I think kind of the most solid plan is to just tank your demo man. It's relatively straightforward. You just kind of tank this guy and have him shoot stickies and try not to get completely destroyed by any soldiers and stuff like that. But the other kind of final note about mid is capping. So capping is kind of an important concept for cough maps as a whole. So being aware of delaying your own spawns and the effect that the cap point has on that. So I'll just go into that really quick in case anyone watching does not know. When you cap the spawn, or cap the point, your uh, your spawns are slower and their spawns are faster. So this is also true like retroactively. If the spawns are, you know, say they have the point and um, they have worse spawns, if you cap, you push your player's spawns back. So to avoid this, you want to... Only cap this point when you have no players dead, if possible, and especially the valuable classes. You would never want to capture this point if your medic is not alive. So it's important to not make these sort of simple mistakes because um, uber advantage on this map is very important, as with all cough maps. So <clears throat> not increasing the length of your medic spawn is really, really important. It can go from... 3 seconds to 11 seconds very easily, which is 20% uh, uh, of the uber. So that's that for mid. Let's talk about offense. So really quick, I'm going to go over the uh, forward hold. So the forward hold is pretty standard. So you get your demo man up here and a scout up here. So your demo man locks down this door with stickies. It's really important just to keep this tiny door locked down. Just keep stickies on it. It's basically spawn camping. You do not want to let anyone through this door. This scout just serves to protect this demo man from this door and this door bombers. Like soldiers getting through fast, just in case. So then you have one more soldier. Gosh, I can't believe I fell down. You have one more soldier right here watching this. This is kind of the spam angle. You just want to shoot rockets down there, not let anyone through this tiny door or this door. You just don't want to let them in to the point at all. But if you can keep them, if you can spam right here, you can keep them out of this room entirely because this door is tiny. So then you get your other soldier right here. Your medic tanking him, your other scout kind of plays around here just to protect, same idea. In case there's bombers from there, bombers through here fast. You protect them. So that's how the forward hold goes. And you only want to do this when you win a fight and have all six people alive. You do not want to do this if there are less than six people alive. So that is how the forward hold works. So that's kind of a rare situation. Having all six people live probably only happens once per scrim or so. Once per map. Mm, yeah. But it's useful to know. So the standard hold is going to be very similar to the mid fight. You want to get your soldier up here. Same thing, your scout can kind of play aggressive, play up here. You can get your demo right here. 
Same idea, you can trap a lot of these places here, here, here. All over on this thing. There's lots of different places. And so, this is normally just to kind of lay some spam in, but once they're kind of here in full force, you usually have to give it up a bit and play kind of behind here, or you're gonna get mulched. And then as a medic, you can kind of support these guys, play as far back as possible, play beam length. And then same thing on flank, you can kind of get a little ag aggressive. You can sort of look like here. You can stand here, stand on this thing, get all over. You can stand on this box, look to do some aggressive stuff. Maybe you get behind, you can kind of do a lot of stuff. And then as pocket scout, you can kind of look to be playing like behind your team, but also support the flank. You want to support this soldier more so than you want to really protect your team uh, from the behind when you're holding a little bit more aggressively. So this would be in situations after you win a fight and they, they lose a lot of people. They get forced entirely out of this main room, the whole point area, they get forced into spawn and uh, you have time to kind of set up and they're not into you. So that would, uh, yeah, that occurs much more commonly. And then there's often times where you just have to disengage from a fight and you kind of play these passive positions. So for example, if you begin to lose fights, you kind of want to regroup with your combo towards Cliff. You can get your medic up here, you can get a scout up here to build. Cliff tends to be very safe <clears throat> for a number of reasons, because uh, first of all, bombs to get here, kind of complicated, uh, very easy to defend area. If your team is already out here, it's easy for players to reinforce here very quickly. And there's a lot of high ground here. It's difficult for them to kind of get up here. So yeah, usually your combo wants to kind of regroup here. Combo never wants to regroup over here. Anytime your medic over is here, it's it's bad. You should never have your medic on grass. You should never be looking to have your medic on concrete. It's a very unsafe, very dangerous position to be playing. Kind of main is okay, but you really want to be in service of kind of getting over here. Uh, if you're ever kind of in this area, you really want to either be leaving or going this way. You just don't want to like hang out right here, because you can get spammed from a lot of different places, one being this rock. It's easy for your for a demo man to sort of spam you from here. Look over there. Soldiers can can bomb you very easily if they get a kind of glimpse of you down there. You're very vulnerable. They can just kind of jump and shoot down at you. Very trivial. They can get on top of this and shoot directly on your head. So, it's kind of a difficult position to play. I would avoid playing here as a medic and as a combo as well. Alright, so I want to go over pushing now. So, the bread and butter situation that happens a lot is they have uber out there and you've all died. So, usually they've won a fight and they're able to just build the uber and your medic died in that fight. So, in this sort of situation, you're going to want to run a four-man sack. You're going to want to buff and facilitate getting all of your players out to cliff and having your explosive classes all jump at the same time and try to force the med and have one of your scouts follow up while your medic and your scout go into spawn and you build and you just build right here so the whole idea of this is simply to get the force on the medic and the rationale for why this works is because your spawns are faster than theirs. So any deaths that they sustain will be worse than your own deaths. So that's kind of the idea of the sacrifice. I really recommend having uh, all your explosive classes plan to land at the same time. So getting all three of these classes to go in at the same time is crucial for this to work. Uh, you really cannot have them sack in one at a time, or else it's very easy to deal with. So it's important to coordinate. Just call a time and, and go. So that is four manning. Usually after a four man, you'll either get the force and 
have Uber, or you won't get the force and you'll also have Uber. So this creates either a an even Uber situation or an Uber advantage situation turned around from a disad situation. So that's what you're going for. Okay, so I'm going to talk about a couple of standard Uber pushes. So I'm going to talk a little bit more about Ubers now. I, I kind of glossed over it in terms of defense or uh, holding. So the kind of bread and butter Uber here, especially if you have a strong pocket scout, is to use your combo kind of run up, up cliff, get your medic right there, your scout's right here, you use right around this corner. Especially if they're playing like close anywhere here, um, you can usually force a better uber because you know you shoot their double man, you shoot their scout, you shoot like maybe there's a soldier up here or something, you force like a f a lot of flashes from this uber and yours can become much better very quickly even though you used first. The way that this goes it's usually very important for your scout to be able to determine whether your uber is better or worse. Conditions for that would be lots of flashes. If they have a lot of flashes yours is gonna be better. If you know theirs is gonna end sooner yours is going to be better. And the opposite's true. If they can solo effectively, they can make their uber last longer than yours, theirs is going to be better. So the sort of two conditions here are if yours is better, you're going to want to call in your bombs. You're going to want to have people follow up and collapse. However, if yours is worse, you're going to want to say that and back up and meet up with your team because vice versa, they're going to be calling a collapse on you. So basically what you're looking to do is kind of get these p players grouped up and once the uber is ending, have your players be ready to follow up and sort of punish their sort of existence here. You do not want to let them uh, kind of live while your uber is still active. So that's basically your entire, uh, your entire goal. The standard sort of uber ad pushes are doing a demo bomb. So like sticky right here, just jump in. Use on that demo man, bring a scout, chase with the scout, catch up with this demo man. While the demo's in the air, he's looking to cut off this area, to cut off their retreat. And then the rest of the uber kind of comes in to make sure this demo doesn't die, and the scout is just doing damage. Same with the demo man. Once he's kind of locked them off, he's taken out his pipes, he's trying to do damage. And he's linking up with his medic. He does not want to die for this. Nobody in the Uber should die. Uh, it's extremely, extremely bad. And meanwhile, while this is happening, you kind of want to usher your team in as well. You can have your soldier's bomb. And you have your flank kind of get high ground. You can have a scout play up on this rock. Follow in behind. That sort of thing. You want to have your entire team playing around this Uber. That's just fundamental sort of TF2 Uber. Um, the second Uber I want to talk about is this Double Scout Chariot. This is another Uber ad situation. So what you're going to want to do is just run up as far as you can. You're going to want to hold this Uber until you really have to use it. And usually once you get into their team, you should just use and just fight these people. So. What you're going to want to do in this situation, and what you're looking to accomplish, is you're going to take both of your scouts, you're going to run them, keep them both 85, or 185, keep your medic at beam length, and just walk around this way, kind of cut off sort of how they want to leave. So they're going to kind of stand here, and you're going to want to just like fight them straight up with two scouts. You're just going to want to tear into them as fast as possible. Usually this push can be slightly obscured, because say they don't, necessarily have someone right here like watching if you can just get across you're kind of in their face very quickly it's sort of deceptively quick even though it does take a long time to sort of get set up the key principles of ubers still sort of apply here you want to be fast and you want to be as effective as possible with the ubers you want to try to kill as many people as possible obviously so that's how that works all right the final thing I want to talk about is how the sniper changes this map. 
and what the dynamic of Sniper is. So, there's kind of two different scenarios, one being much better than the other, so... Your team can only have one Sniper and Sixes. And that means either one of your Scouts or one of your Soldiers has to play Sniper, if they are going to play Sniper. So... That means you're either going to be lacking in one of the two categories of having sufficient follow-up or having sufficient defense. So what I mean by this is, for example, your roamer plays sniper. Now you only have one soldier, but you have two scouts. So you have sort of a lot of defensive positioning and not a lot of ways to follow up on aggression. You're really not able to get aggressive if not for the sniper, because you, you only have one soldier to bomb. So in contrast, having a scout play sniper leaves your team relatively vulnerable, because you give up the sort of defensive capabilities of a scout. The sniper does not have the same abilities as a scout, frankly put. Uh, a sniper on bats back here is just not able to deal with someone behind in the same way this that a scout can. He's not able to deal with bombers the same way a scout can. Of course, a fantastic sniper can change the game for your team, but you know it comes with a significant trade-off in terms of losing a scout, one of the strongest classes in the game. So usually when you do play sniper, you want to have the point. You generally want to run the sniper as like one of your soldiers. You do not want to give up your scouts, especially in higher level play. You want to play defensively around your sniper and allow your sniper to kind of do the work for your team. You don't want to get picked off and you don't want to get bombed. You just kind of want to force them to sort of play around your sniper. What they're going to do is try to double bomb, basically. And if you can stop their double bomb attempts with your scouts, that's just going to be good for your team. So that's what you're looking to do when you have a sniper. Just keep the point and protect him. Play defensive. And same thing, you're going to kind of mirror that with your medic and your demo man. Your demo man is usually going to back up. He's going to have defensive traps. You know, that can be anywhere around all of these. Like, anywhere around here can put a trap or traps. Your medic is usually going to be playing back here, kind of looking to protect your sniper, help your scouts kind of just play a little bit more passive, not looking to really do anything. Uh, the final note is sniper v sniper, kind of not that interesting, but you really want to just keep your medic out of sight lines, keep your sniper buffed wherever he is. Usually if they're running a sniper, they've also made one of the concessions of not having a soldier, so... That usually means you can play the sniper pretty aggressively and keep your beam on him. It's basically just a sniper 1v1. So that's how sniper tends to work on this map. Other off classes don't really recommend. Um, the rest of them tend to just not be that effective because sniper is so good. Um, heavy would be good if not for sniper. Spy is not that fantastic, but sometimes it's run. Uh, Pyro is not that fantastic either. Just really not that many uses for it. Um, NG also quite rare. Very easy for soldiers to spam down guns. Not really enough time to get stuff like that set up anyway. So that's why all of those are uncommon. If that was not obvious. Uh, one thing I want to address real quick is breaking a forward hold. So that standard forward hold is quite well known. The common way to break it is to basically sacrifice a pyro through this door. So what you're going to want to do is have your pocket scout go pyro. And you're just going to want to run right with your pyro and take a soldier. You want to take a solo soldier behind this pyro. So you let the pyro go first. They clear everything out of here. And generally you let this pyro die. Uh, unless they, they really have a decent shot of living. And then you follow in right after this pyro goes with a soldier. And you use around this corner. 
and you try to do as much damage to the combo if they're here as possible. Um, this would be to break the standard hold that I, I laid out before where their combo is set up here, where the medic is here. Uh, if you can force a favorable exchange here with just a solo, because oftentimes they'll have both a scout and a soldier, uh, this can be good for your team. Uh, the reason that Pyro that Pyro can die is because, first of all, they'll die early if they die all, and your spawns are better because they have the point. So it's okay for your Pyro to die in this sort of situation because he'll be back up to uh, scout soon enough. At the same time, you usually want to get the rest of your team out through the same door. Uh, it's almost impossible for the other classes to get through these other doors by themselves so by using this uber you kind of get your entire team out through here and then you're looking to rotate your combo towards cliff whether it's here or you actually go up on to cliff and play up here so that is breaking the forward hold yeah so this is how i really recommend playing product um if you have any questions, feel free to let me know in the comments. Uh, let me know if you have any suggestions. I'm hoping to do this every week for the future maps, so I think upcoming next map is Villa after this week, so best of luck to all teams watching this video this week.